evolution. It's a subject that evokes um, strong emotions for some. But wherever you stand on this argument, I trust that you will find the sessions informative and inspirational, even if you don't have really an interest in the subject of evolution itself. I hope you will be surprised by the theological possibilities explored in, in this series. So first of all, I want to say that this is not a creation versus evolution debate. That, that's not the focus of these sessions. Um, the, so what, what does motivate it? Uh, a group called the Barna Group that uh, conducts uh, studies very often amongst um, evangelicals with, within the USA have found that three out of every five young Christians, 60%, disconnect permanently or for extended period of time from church life and from their faith after the age of 15. And one of the major reasons for this is the perceived disconnect between faith and science, between the church and the reality of the world that we live in. And so that fact alone should uh, tell you that this is a subject we, we need to speak about, at least. Um, I want you to consider the, the following. There are many respected scientists, scientists such as Francis Collins, who's the head of the Human Gen Genome uh, Project. Uh, and many others who are believers, who confesses a, a personal relationship with, with Jesus Christ, yet they find um, evolution not a contradiction to their faith, but, but something that is completely harmonious with them. Um, Similarly, there are many theologians, people who give themselves to the understanding of the scriptures, uh, who ha have no uh, hesitation to affirm that evolution would be the way in which they perceive God to create. Let me give you an example. N.T. Wright, many, many of our audience would know him a respected theologian and and i'll re, uh, again i'll add these links to youtube and to their videos in in the actual article that accompanies this video but nt wright um, in his one video says if creation happens through christ then evolution is what you would expect another well-known theologian that many of you would know him as well richard raw he said it this way, God seems to have created things that continue to create and recreate themselves from within. A fully incarnate God creates through evolution. And so that is just a, a quick introduction to say that there, there are many scientists who accept evolution um, as the process through which the diversity and the complexity of life emerged. And they don't find that to in any way be in conflict with their faith in the scriptures and in Jesus Christ. There are many theologians who also do not see any contradiction between the scriptures and the process of evolution. In fact, they find it illuminating. So... What are these sessions about? As we've mentioned, many people reject evolution because of the theological persuasions. Similarly, many people reject their faith because of the perceived incompatibility with um, re their faith uh, with um, evolutionary science. And so the focus of these few sessions that we'll be doing are the theological possibilities and implications if evolution is the way through which God created. So we begin with the assumption that evolution is the process through which creation unfolds. And based on that, we look at the theological possibilities. 
Again, if you're interested in the science of it, I'll give some more links to it in, in the article. But the focus here will not be the science. The focus will be the theology and, and the theological possibility. So let's begin. Psalms 139 verse 13. For it was you who created my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. David is at all <laughs> at this God who is totally involved and intertwined with the process of forming this new life. You know, every baby that is being knit together in a mother's womb is a wonder. Um, but it is, it is not a wonder that separates the natural process from God's involvement. David doesn't believe that, you know, and neither do we, that God has to intervene against the course of nature to produce the wonder of every human life. Neither does he think that the natural process is something in opposition to who God is. No, this natural process of a human life forming is also a gift of God. They are intertwined. They, they're not two different things. Now, many on the extreme sides of this argument would try and frame their arguments in this way. Um, they, those who are, are able to explain the process in detail, some of them would argue that because we are able to explain and understand the natural process, therefore there is no room for God. Those on the other side of the argument would say, and they'll point to the many instances in which we do not have such clear explanations, in which many questions still abound. And they would use that argument to say that necessitates the intervention of God to create. So you've got those extremes of either God is not necessary or the natural process cannot explain it, so God had to intervene. Now, the God, uh, that argument is known as the God of the gaps. It basically says where there's a gap in our knowledge, a gap in our understanding and way of uh, explaining an event, we credit that uh, event, therefore, to God's intervention. Now, that's not a very strong argument because, number one, that gap continues to get smaller and smaller as we are able to explain more as science advances. That gap in which God supposedly exists is getting ever smaller. Um, and and so it's not a very strong argument. The, the God revealed in Jesus is not a God of the gaps. Rather, he's the incarnate one. He's the one who has intertwined himself in our fleshly, earthly existence. He's as much part of this reality as we can possibly imagine him to be. So let me be clear about the meaning of what I'm saying. The God I want to present to you, even if science is able, it's unlikely, but even if they are able to explain every process from the beginning of this universe until now, it would not in any way diminish the wonder <laughs> and the necessity of the God that I want to present to you because this God is intertwined in every natural process and the more we learn about these processes the more we understand them the greater my awe and wonder and worship of this God. So that's the first point in this first video I want to make that the natural process and who God is are not mutually exclusive. This God is the reason why there are natural processes. The reason why there 
there is something rather than nothing. And I so look forward to the next session where we're going to consider the idea of design and how that um, is illuminated in this process of evolution. Speak to you soon.